Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Mantalk.ke. We are back home in our beautiful, beautiful location. We'll explain why I'm smiling later. Um, we're back in Kafisi on Riverside Drive. It's a co-working space. Uh, you can use it as, in, as an individual, as a company. It's got the knowledge room here where you can hold meetings, fantastic aesthetics. So Kafisi, thank you so much for being our location sponsor for all these episodes. I'm going to let Oscar do this intro because he has a lot to say about our guest today. So Oscar, Tell the people, buddy. Tell First the people. of all, welcome to another banging, another one, slapping, Come on. unbelievable episode of Matchock.ke. On. on my right, to my right, as you can see on camera, is the gorgeous, fantastic, beautiful, intelligent, magnanimous. She will smile. It's coming. There it is. Joanne Thuo, who is famously known as Joanne the Career Coach, um, who has a very, very, very diverse academic background. Um, of course, she's worked for IBM, which is a highlight um, of her career as a recruiter. And I can't wait to have conversations with you today, John. I'm very excited to have you here. First of all, we must say you look incredible. Thank you. No, you look fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> so thanks for coming. Uh, so when there's uh, a guest on the show, we're obviously going to get into the crux of careers and things, but we always think the best place to start is with your beginning and like how that mm. got you to be the person you are today mm. and what's informed from your early childhood, who you are now. So mm. just in a few minutes, tell us like your background. You can do your own intro as well. And yeah. um, how your upbringing has informed who you are now. I think that's where you can kick off. Yeah. Super. So, um... I'm Joanne, uh, a mom of three. Um, I grew up. I grew up on a farm. Mm. Yeah, I grew up in Nakuru uh, on a farm. So, like you know, we had uh, animals. My mom used to rear chicken. Um, so you know, like the farm life. Um, hmm. What else about my background? Um, I did. I did psychology in school. Uh, studied psychology, loved it. Um, I think I identify as a psychologist, um, but then now branched off to doing a HR. I know I have skipped. <laughs> no, don't worry, no, 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 don't worry. <laughs> uh, quite a bit, but yeah. So uh, my, my background is, is in psychology. Um, hmm. So I started off my career um as a psychologist. So I was a school psychologist for uh, for quite some time. I loved the work. I loved my kids. Um, but then now there was this opportunity at IBM that needed someone who's done you know, psychology uh, to work in HR. And I jumped onto that opportunity and I got my, you know, like my first job in HR. Yeah. Um, and then I uh, grew in the ranks uh, pretty fast. Um, and then I decided to leave because then I felt that role was not maximizing me to the full. So I left IBM to start my business. Of course, it was very difficult. The first years were horrible. Um, just, you know, trying to set up, um, trying to make my name known. Um, but I think for me, the break came during the pandemic because then everyone was at home and everyone, you know, like... People started having like these conversations with themselves and thinking, I don't want to spend so much time on traffic. I want to spend more, you know a lot of time with my kids, with my family. So so many people now were revamping their CVs, their LinkedIn profiles. So when I was busy, like uh, because at this point I was still doing CVs, but not at a very high scale. So I during the pandemic, like anyone else, I thought like Jesus, like I, what's going to happen to me? But then like the business just grew in leaps and bounds during that time um and here we are i like that the fact that this entire podcast yes. has been summarized in what i would say was 45 to 50 seconds yes, yes, that's a skill. <laughs> so we will go back to the farm <laughs> <laughs> in nakuru and slowly walk towards increasing the meat <laughs> to that um fantastic plate this the next question i have for you joanne um taking you back to the farm is what do you think about like your family life and your bringing like pushed you towards psychology and push you towards having an interest in psychology? Uh, so here's the thing. Um, my, my siblings are extremely bright, like, oh. you know, so like straight A's and I was the one who was the least intelligent. Oh no. Yeah, so so I remember like you know they always used to have these conversations, especially like around math, and I never used to understand. Then like they'd laugh at me because like I'm the one who's like not like very intelligent. Um, so I 
I ended up doing something in, of course, like around arts because I'm very good, was always very good in English yeah. and like, like something that's not math or science. Um, but then those, I, like I always had this drive uh, to be, to be better and to be bigger because then there's always that voice telling me you're not good enough. You're not very smart uh, because then I remember I went to, uh, to SIU yeah. And it was like, it was a joke because then, um, you see, it's not like University of Nairobi where like the smart people go. Well, first of all, I've taken that so personally <laughs> because I did not go to University of Nairobi. I went to Strath. Yeah. But also, like, like Strath yeah. is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but like, like, it's you... not, USIU is not like, you know, Strathmore or University of Nairobi or like the other... University. I, I hear that. I hear that. Mm. Common section mm. for all the unis. So you're saying? Let me tell you. Let me tell you. When a recruiter says that, yeah. <laughs> that was good. You know, yeah. It's funny because, like now, yeah. um, I mean, people who go to uh, to SIU, like that's a, of course, it, like it's a very good university. Yeah. But like that during those that days, time, those yeah. days, it was for like the people who are not. Yeah, but like the thing I find interesting about SIU is. When you say those days, um, um, and this might be speculation, but there's a lot of very interesting people I've met, like over 25. The impact they've had. Right. Yeah, and they're from USIU, and yeah. I'm very proud of it. I think whenever I stopped, I kind of lost the, I shed the university stereotypes. Um, because we'll get into that in a second, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to recruitment abroad. Mm. Um, because when you're, when you're trying to get into like jobs abroad, one of the things I noticed was at Alliance High School, that Strathmore path doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. They're like, oh, it's cute. It mm. doesn't need Eton. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, it's like, you know, you're, mm. oh, Strathmore is nice, but it's not, it's not Oxford. Yeah. Um, mm. And when you, and so I kind of lost that bias um, in the context of my career journey. But like, I think I've just to kind of add some bone to what you've said. I think that a lot of interesting and capable, even Saudi Soul, now that I think about it, mm -hmm. went to, Yes, you a lot of people who are in the creative arts and are doing really big things are actually from there. Yeah. And look at what you've done. Which is, right. Yeah. But you see, so like during that time, I thought I'm going there because I'm not very really smart. That was yeah. like, that's actually what I thought. Yeah. But for me, I really wanted to go to SIU. I wanted to go there because also I needed to pay my school fees. Yeah. And it was the only university that I was able to work and study. Oh. So I was able to pay my way through uh, campus. What were you doing, if you don't mind me asking, during your time in campus? So I was working in school. Okay. Um, and then also, I, I don't say what exactly I was doing, but then I was also working uh, okay, I like, hear that. to complement the, um, the work. Yeah. yeah. So I was able to, you know, um, uh, pay my way through. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. And then another question just to follow up was, how do you think the fact that you were perceived as being less than by your, but you perceived yourself as being less than and probably maybe your family or your, your siblings did it in just, they didn't know how much it affected you. How much do you think it changed in terms of your personality and who you are today? Oh my God. Like, I think it really now pushed me to be extra. Like, because then I wanted to prove to, to my, first to myself, but then also to them. And it took many years. Um, because then, like, at the back of my mind, I, I used to always think, because I'm not so smart, uh, you know, I'm not going to end up in a job that's lucrative you know enough because then it's not science mm. because you see like the work that i do today it's a lot of social media work 10 years ago if you told someone that like i'd actually make money off of instagram they'd yeah. be like are you are you mad <laughs> like you know like are you crazy um and i do make money off of uh, for me it's linkedin and or, like even instagram but like that's my bread and my butter this person who was not quote unquote like you know like so smart but then you know like i ended up making money much more than someone who was like very good in like the sciences and probably yeah. got like you know the a's and, and and went to you know like the quote unquote like big universities so i think for me it really pushed me to want to be to make something out of myself 
I hear that. Yeah. yeah well. I always feel like um, you've mentioned that kind of adversity pushed you to even want to be better, right, with, mm. with career. And now obviously being a mother and a career coach and a psychologist, I think that's a very nice trifecta mm. to be able to answer this question, right? So a lot of young guys might be having a similar situation where maybe their peers are quote unquote smarter by grades, et cetera. Right. But what's the thing that you'll be telling your kids when it comes to looking at the academia mm. um, and their intelligence and then looking at their career path? Like what's one thing you'll be preaching to them? That right. you learned. I love that question. Mm. And and um I'm I'm very, very intentional, especially now all my kids are boys. I'm raising mm. boys. Um and I'm very intentional about like so for my kids, um trying to see what their potential is and then I um you know I want to help them in that. So like my firstborn, he he loves water. Mm. So from you know, like from a very early age we started swimming. Mm. My second born, um, he he does gymnastics. So because then he just like he loves climbing and you know like doing all those things. I mean, I really don't care if they are they do very well academically. It, it would be good if you know someone became like a doctor or an engineer. But what I'm more interested in, and this is also something that I usually am on the lookout for when when I'm interviewing. Are you a good communicator? Are you um are you honest are you are you are you innovative can you think outside of the box are you are you a good person are you someone who I'd enjoy working with all these are soft skills have nothing to do with whether you went to Harvard or USIU or University of Nairobi and you find so many people lose out on jobs because number one they're not good communicators orally yeah. and number two even written so I'm not going to even interview you because your CV is horrible. Mm. So those things, can you communicate well? Are you adaptable? Are you coachable? Are you teachable? Are you someone who has integrity? Are you just a good person that, you know, I'd enjoy working with? And for me, like, those are the things that I want to teach my children because I know those things are what is going to, you know, like, push them and help them become people mm. in the in the society, not, like, what grade they got. And there's also... Um, there are so many people. I think was it like two years ago we talked. Uh, there was this thing in the papers and in the media around the first class dishonor or something like that. Mm -hmm. That then there are so many first class honor students who don't have jobs. Mm -hmm. There was this mm -hmm. first class honors someone who was like cleaning cars and all that, and it's mostly because then you have a first class honors, but you cannot interview. Mm -hmm. You have yeah. a first class honors, mm -hmm. you don't have a CV. Mm -hmm. You have a first class honors, you cannot you cannot be able to demonstrate what your value is. So you come in for the interview and I cannot, I don't know what you can do or you're not someone I can put in front of a client. Oh, that's so true. Oh. Yeah. yeah. You have first class honors, you don't have a LinkedIn profile. Mm -hmm. You have a first class honors, like your CV is horrible, but then now you think because I have a first class honors, you need to know I'm smart. No, I don't need to know. Like mm. you need to show me yeah. on paper and you need to come for the interview and demonstrate it. Otherwise, your 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 straight A's don't mean anything to me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wow. That makes sense, though, because I remember there was one time I was interviewing someone to hire, and we did, like, 10 that day, and one of our columns genuinely was vibes. Like, it was like, okay, can I do all of this? But the last one, we were rating their vibes out of 10. So yeah. I think what you're saying, basically, is when you're uh, nurturing, like, a young mind, make sure that, yes, they're academic, but their personality needs to be complemented through other soft skills and activities so right. they're a well-rounded human is that right right and that's why now when i look back in hindsight like right now i hire usiu only like like i'd hire in a group of people i i, I just want to check did you go to usiu you're like on top of my list mm. but you see like 10 years ago i didn't think that was i thought it was the university where the, the people who don't do well normally go but you see the thing about like a, a university like usiu it's going to uh, it makes you an all-rounded person. Mm. And there's so much a hiring manager can do with that. It doesn't matter if you didn't get like a first class. Mm. There's so much someone can work with, with someone who is like a good communicator, innovative, mm. can think outside of the box, mm. adaptable, coachable, and all those things. Um, so that, you know, that all-roundedness, mm. um, important. Excellent. Uh, just to follow up on that, for someone starting out their career right now, like they've just got in first year university, um, whichever university that is, what are some of the things you think 
as a recruiter they should be doing what are some of the activities they should be engaging in so they can make themselves more attractive to you more all-rounded in the sense are there any specific things that you you'd say you look for when you look at a cv or when you're looking at a resume or a cover letter that make you say okay this is this that this that this that what would be your i'd say ideal candidate um for depending on obviously job to job but like what's your ideal candidate for a first year graduate what do you think a first year graduate should say okay i'm starting school now what do i need to do next to be all rounded so this is someone who is still in school yeah still in school just started first year okay so um the first thing i'd say is um I know most people normally think that you need to wait until you're done to do like an internship or volunteer or you know volunteer somewhere but I'd say I'd say start now start in first year mm-hmm. because um you want to have some form of experience so that then by the time you're graduating you you're going to say you know um I got a degree in engineering but I have four years experience in even maybe shooting a podcast like I'm um, the camera guy um like the internet person or you know whatever um so uh, I would you know work beat internship volunteer etc but just f- find some way in you know where you can uh, you can try and work and then number two I'd also talk about you need to have some online presence so It, there's no way that's written you need to wait four years for you to have a LinkedIn profile you can start as you know like a first year uh, so have some form of online presence so like you know build your your LinkedIn profile uh, do your CV because then when you're applying for those internships mm-hmm. and some of these like internships and volunteer opportunities they are so the 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 interview process is so rigorous to get an internship or a volunteer opportunity at like maybe Cisco or IBM or Microsoft but then that internship can set you up for life it can set you up in your career for life uh, it's funny you mentioned Cisco i did an internship with Cisco in london um and how i got that uh, was through heavy networking Um so I met the um, head of legal during a trip back um he was in Kenya doing on safari um I networked I met his son when I was in alliance and then we had lunch together and he had I was in third year he was like oh you're in your penalty mate of study I was like yeah do you want to do you think you want to um go to you want to go to London there's a there's an opportunity there applied sat through the interview process and then suddenly I was in London now the funny thing about it was at that time my interests were in oil and gas so that i was i was working for the extractive um strathmore oil and gas currently strat extractives baraza but it was called extractives oil and gas uh, law center then it became um strathmore extractive industry center now it is extractives baraza mm-hmm. so we were setting that up um and then i went into cisco and then i learned so much about gdpr cloud technologies cloud computing then i wrote my dissertation So mm-hmm. just to give you kind of context as to how much it can affect your career good internship wrote my dissertation on cloud computing and data protection mm-hmm. in the cloud ended up working for ESET which is a cybersecurity company mm-hmm. um for 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 a year so my background kind of for that period of time I would not know as much as I know about tech and software as a service products right if I didn't take that internship leap mm-hmm. and i think that's something that's so important for first years mm-hmm. and even when um in london the fact that i have that cisco internship from london yeah. right now as a post grad mm-hmm. is something whenever i put in my cv guys go yeah. whoa mm-hmm. that's crazy so it's, it's 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 a very very good point that yeah um i think you've also demystified <clears throat> this there's always this argument with like students where they're applying for jobs and then they're saying they want four years experience i'm a student how do i get the four years mm, there's always yeah. been that weird disconnect so what you're saying is the extra curricular substitutes your age because you've been in the field and that's right. sort of yeah. what happens to you exactly um oscar mentioned about networking and i know you've mentioned when you're looking at people you look at usiu but there's some factors you've mentioned of the individual that you can't see in a cv mm. so my question now is like getting into the door mm. to be able to show those skills mm. to the people what are like mistakes or tips people can do to get the interview because you could be incredible uh, on paper right. but they don't know you've got this other stuff right. or you could be really bad on paper but how do you how do you get in the door mm. for the interview first perfect mm. so that's a very good question and i always say <clears throat> the purpose of a cv is to mm. land you an interview the cv can never land you a job 
so you need to invest in a good cv you had rather pay you know mm. like a cv writer mm. like myself or any mm. other person yeah. and 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 just get an awesome cv because the purpose of a cv is to get you in front you yeah. know of the hiring team and of course the, the other you know the other thing um and, and people i think don't prioritize is now networking mm. um and you know if you're like me i'm i'm very introverted so I'd rather not be in any social gatherings. I'd rather not network. Mm. But then there are platforms like LinkedIn mm. where you can, you know, like form connections, try and reach out, try and inbox people um, and build your network. But then networking is so, so important because if I wanted to hire, um, you know, like maybe a head of digital and you recommend someone to me, mm then already they are like i mean they are 80% on their way to getting hired because mm. you recommended them right. yeah. and if oscar recommends someone to you i'm mm. sure like you know you'd take mm. that as like the gospel truth right yeah, yeah. yeah so like networking goes a very long way mm. and you you know whether you're an extrovert or you're introverted you need to find a way of networking because that, then that is going to go a very long way in you getting in front of the hiring manager um and then of course the other way would be having a strong online presence so like a platform like linkedin uh, so many people either don't know about it or they find it very hard to navigate so they don't have a linkedin profile do you have one oh, yeah. <laughs> <Well>. <laughs> i do but yeah i have not really used it right yeah. and yeah. and so is it, yeah. most people like i mean most people don't hmm. use their linkedin profiles hmm. but like for me i for me linkedin it's it's the backbone like it's it's my bread and my butter just like I, a few weeks ago uh yeah a few weeks ago so there's this company that reached out to me on linkedin and uh gave me some job and like paid me and i was so shocked mm. cuz then we just like they, they saw my profile um and, and you know um they saw my profile um we got onto a, an interview and like they gave me this you know like job and paid me good money mm. And you see someone I've never met and there's so many of those stories so many people are getting like remote jobs so many people are getting like amazing jobs mm -hmm. off of LinkedIn mm -hmm. and it's a, I think for me it's a platform that's underutilized mm -hmm. because then maybe we don't know how important it is and it's a perfect way to network also mm -hmm. yeah. yeah um especially in a market just to add to that especially in a market like Kenya or uh, the African market which is a developing economy mm -hmm. There's, I, I, and I, I dare say this, there's not so many opportunities to network as there are in the developed world where mm. you're like in a school mm. and the careers department just floods your emails saying there's this event, there's this event happening here, mm. here, here and here. And all of these big companies, because the markets are so huge there, yeah. are trying to take the best talent. Uh. Um, I feel like LinkedIn in Kenya or in the rest of Africa is so important because finally there's some visibility. Right. as to the talent pool and where everyone uh, is everyone is and what they're doing um and that allows recruiters to kind of reach down and like pick out the best talent exactly Now, and vice versa and so vice versa. you can reach out to that recruiter exactly. in in Cisco USA exactly and and another thing wow um another another like example of that uh arrived when i arrived in when i arrived for my masters uh so i go to queen mary and one of them we went for a networking event at um credit suisse um because we were trying to understand investment banking and the, one of the quickest things that happened in the room was i was referred to immediately oh you're from that university you need to talk to that guy so i go walk up to um a very interesting guy called Ryan and he says oh you went to queen mary i'll follow you on linkedin mm -hmm. and then from linkedin we've managed to establish like a relationship mm -hmm. and now he kind kind of guide me and hold my hand as to okay this is how what works what works here and what doesn't and i feel like for a lot of people who come from i still haven't learned their job but like or lad at age but like in, in the context of the developing and the developed economy and that moving the linkedin can be a really really big help for you to be able to reach out to people who you care about and who you'd like to actually mentor you mm -hmm. yeah so, i feel like that um that's so interesting that now it's like follow me on linkedin rather than it used to be like oh here's my business card yeah. etc mm -hmm. so online presence right from what i'm hearing um i have two questions online presence from what i'm hearing is it needs to be there right yeah. but then at the same time if it's there how do you make it right because exactly. you could have a linkedin profile that's cool and then they look and they say oh let's check their other 
socials mm. and then on your other socials they're like that's not the kind of guy <laughs> yeah. that we need here right so how do you strike a balance because if that guy says follow me on linkedin he's like okay cool linkedin oh oscar yeah. comment there's a link to my ig mm. how do you create a positive image on multiple platforms because mm. you don't want to be like really fresh on this one yeah. then your instagram kind of yes. you know tarnishes that yeah. that image please What's tell us about like? yeah how to brand yourself yeah. as a person yeah. online cross platforms cross platforms yeah. yeah okay so uh a difficult question that one uh because then like now for example like now you guys what you do yeah. there's there's man talk mm. but then there's also the other mm. things that you do this mm. is like this is not the only thing mm. that uh, you know that defines your career and defines who you are mm. Mm. Um, and so your, your branding needs to be very targeted because then there, there, there's certain, uh, a certain target audience that you'd attract from the way you brand yourself as Mantok, mm. but then there's also another audience that you'd attract, uh, like another different target audience from Mantok, mm -hmm. from another like platform, for example. Mm -hmm. I don't yeah. know if you're together no, hey, or yeah, I have yeah, yeah, lost. Yeah, yeah. No, you, no, you, you, you'll have mixed, yeah. you'll basically have you, mixed, mixed audiences. audiences. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so sometimes like now there are people who are during the day, you're an, um, an engineer at IBM and then, you know, a part of you also, like you have a stall at City Market. Mm. and you're selling fish and meat right yeah so so you need to have those two brands mm. you know like concurrently and both working for you so so a number of a, a number of things and the first of course and which is most important is you need to be you need to identify your target audience mm. and create a brand for that target audience mm. and you're going to create that brand either as Eli mm -hmm. or you know, start a, like a business and call mm. it something else. Mm -hmm. But then you're, you're, you're investing in that brand. Right. Okay. Th does that make sense? Exactly. Yeah. Do they know that that's your brand at this point or it's just something you're kind of doing? You see, so you, you, you as Eli needs to understand, first of all, like, so this is the business I'm trying to push and, mm. You know, am I, am I creating this brand as Eli or mm. like as a, you know, as a, business mm, mm, and mm. then not try and grow it mm. so like now for me um i'm john the career coach and i'm john the career coach on instagram on linkedin mm. on facebook on tiktok on youtube it's just consistent it's consistent mm. but it's because the, the kind of work that i do is just one i don't mm. you know there's nothing else mm. it's mm. it's it's the career that's what i want to do there's there, there's certain other things that i do I've, i don't know why i keep forgetting i'm also an author so i've written oh. a book um i have another like upcoming one um but then it it ties to still you know it's still john the career coach um so so it's very important that you understand you know like what you know uh, what business what business or what product or service are you trying to sell um and um you know like what branding it needs on you know on instagram on tiktok on youtube on linkedin um and then now you know like push that brand um the certain things that of course are important for uh, when you're creating an online brand and it, it would be things like you know you need to be consistent in mm. terms of the way like you're posting mm. uh, the quality of the photos and the videos mm. um are you are you selling value yeah mm. you know, are selling, you selling sell, value it's not value it's about what you're giving the people that are trying mm. to follow you on that platform yeah, yeah. okay yeah okay. i have i have a, just a follow-up question on your online brand right how do you think like recruiters perceive um candidates who show strength in let's say social media like the ability to push the company brand out now and an understanding of the online presence um versus people who don't do it at all like you know there's there's the guy who's like in uni um just chilling vibing invisibly getting his A's mm -hmm. passing doing well and he has to enter the job market with the other guy who's like, okay, a good student as well, but has kind of understood the nuances of self-branding and online branding. As a recruiter, when you see those two people sit in front of you and you're like, okay, this guy has a LinkedIn thing, this one doesn't. Is it, how does that affect your decision-making? 
Um, it depends on the kind of job I'm recruiting for. Excellent. Because then if it's an engineer who needs to be behind the uko like with the wires and <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. I mean you, like you don't need an online presence, but then if I'm I'm in need of someone who is like a BDM, yeah. there's absolutely no way I'm hiring that guy who has no idea it, what TikTok exactly. Is. So if you're a front facing if you're in the front office, let's say yeah. you're a friend you're facing clients, yeah, then it's 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 vital that you have at least an element of yeah. Yeah, that's and, and then also, like you see, most organizations nowadays they want someone who is multi skilled, multi talented. Yeah. So you can go and sell, but then you can also post on Instagram. Yeah. You understand, like you're with it. You understand Excellent. what is going on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so it, it's actually it's more advantageous to you if you have this side skill. And then it it's become such a vital skill. Yes. I mean, all organizations would need someone who is yes. you know uh sa- like like tech savvy but then you can also navigate instagram and facebook and you know post and do all those things mm-hmm. so it's something that you you almost need to have yeah. and then i always tell first class owners you know uh, people because then you see like you graduate and you have this like very strong grade and you want to assume that you know i will just know that you are this bright person and hire you which normally is not the case yeah. if you don't brand yourself you'll always remain hidden in the dark yeah there's there's a follow up question to that and there's a very specific reason why i've asked it that way um there are certain cultures things that are i'd say invisible that you won't read in the books and nobody will tell you but like are a culture of the business from wherever you come from For example, one of the things I learned was in finance in London, we never wear we never wear brown shoes in the city. We always wear black shoes. Things like that. Or we you don't wear two bright colors in the office or in that part of the world. You wear the navies, the grays, and sometimes the blue. So there's certain cultures of work wherever it is you're going and these cultures of work depending on whichever field you're in. Um how do you Is there any advice that you'd give to like students or people who are trying to get into these industries as to how they can find information about those cultures and the conscious things that they need to be about? Hmm. Mm. Oh, I'd say uh of course uh do your research. Like you know, like do your research about the the area that you're going into and you want to know you know like the interviews and and i think it would come in when you're preparing for interviews mm-hmm. let me tell you like i don't know if it's the generation but nowadays mm-hmm. the kind when candidates come into the interview there it is please where talk where, about where, 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 where? talk about it mm. and and you know like you 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 ask something simple like like now for example yeah. if you're hiring someone for man talk mm. you know like you you of course like you'd ask what do you know about man talk and they have mm no idea yeah. whether it's even a podcast mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. it's like yeah. it's a stall in city market you know yeah, yeah, like yeah. like yeah. like someone would have no idea mm. um so sometimes candidates would come for an interview and they've not researched about the organization they don't know about the culture they they know like nothing so for me i would say uh, like do your research about the the area that you're going into and you know like understand what you need to to do like not do if there's you know like dress codes Excellent. and and all that Fantastic. i've literally yeah. been on the other, that's so true because again because i'm always going to be coming from the business side because i'm i'm not employed right but now when i was hiring somebody we did the same thing we had 10 shortlisted and the third question was because it was for, for social media for my other company my third question was okay uh looking at our page now currently and the vibe of what we're trying to achieve what would you tweak and what would you change and we had some people in the interview process that were just that just said oh no you're doing great you're doing fine i wouldn't do mm-hmm. anything then we had other people that had they were like oh i'm glad you've asked so you changed this color theme we do this rebrand yeah. etc and that like one response you're like okay we're starting already at a six yeah. rather than from the beginning of me teaching you the culture you're like mm-hmm. you're familiar so i've definitely seen being on the other side of the table just how effective it is to have a little bit of information and you can mm. even just wing it as long as you have like yeah. the cause mm. of what these p- people do then you can kind of yeah wing the rest yeah. so yeah. I've, i've definitely seen that yeah. definitely seen that. for me i think now speaking to the side of the employee <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. is one of the uh, so for one of the interviews that i was going through uh, was a video interview and so me i've gone i've done re- i've done research but i've done i've done more because re- online they're telling you 
we care about you. We care a lot about more about you and the skills mm. you need to bring. We care about so me I've gone and done research about it. I'm like okay, what mm. can I say? Yeah. What's in my CV? Yeah. What's in my resume? So I'm like even in my cover letter, I'm reading my own cover letter yeah. to apply for that job. Yeah. Now, video interview, first question. Why do you think you're a good fit for organization? No, <laughs> why do you think you're a good fit for our organization? Mm. What do you know about our organization? Mm. What do you know about the division in which you're going to work? Mm. How do you think you can add value to that division? Mm. So like at first it was like what do i know about the organization generally yeah. what do i know about it in specific the next thing was like how what do you think about our industry actually mm. that was one of the the first question was what do you think about our industry then the second one was how do you think you can fit in our organization within that industry mm. what do you think about our this department mm. working in that industry and then the final question was how do you think you'd be a good fit mm. so that was like the last question yeah and like When I read the first question was what what do you think about our industry mm. what do you think about our organization I was like yeah. damn it and it's like and the worst thing was like it's this like timed format thing yeah and I was like Whoa. stress 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 um mm. so like I think it's really really important like to do your research and mm. to like know about um mm. to know what you're going to do and what you what, what's going to happen yeah yeah, yeah. I right, follow up question um off of that um I wanted to know specifically for especially for for a lot of guys who are now like post grad um who are coming from you know you've undergrad degree has come from like the developed I mean the developing economies like you know Kenya you you've studied in USIU but then you find yourself doing a post grad in a place like the UK and you're trying to break into that market because there are very interesting opportunities around you what tips do you think you can just throw um that you think can assist candidates of that nature So the first thing of course would be your CV. Okay. So um the there's there's a CV that's called a Euro Europass uh, that's very specific for the European market that you know wouldn't probably work like for this a uh, a uh, market so because then you see you'll be applying for jobs you'll be applying for internships and things like those mm-hmm. so you need a CV that works. Mm-hmm. Um and then of course the second thing would be you want to prepare well in advance for the interviews like now like in your case I think you're you're caught off guard <laughs> mm. <laughs> So you know like you want to consult a career coach like do an interview preparation session um like in those markets the other thing that's so big are behavioral questions uh-huh. So you <laughs> you you you're given like so many case studies you're given like scenario based questions yeah. and you 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 are assessed so, so like you're put in as assessment centers uh, psychometric assessments and now in this market this is the standard yeah, slowly join what is an assessment center please for me <laughs> what is an assessment center tell me so so it, it's just um uh they call it an assessment center it's it's not like a place but then it's a, a group of um uh, how, how can i uh, call them um let's just say like s- multiple interviews that would you'd go through and they're testing different things yeah mm-hmm. so for each part uh, you know for each and every job they know we want uh, like for example we are testing for adaptability mm-hmm. for someone who is a leader we are testing for like this particular skill and then now they come up with a set of questions that they're going to ask you in these centers that are going to test exactly what it is that they are, they are looking for and so i always say that this there's no right or wrong answer yeah but then if you try and 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 beat the system you'll fail because then it's your the 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 um, uh, the, the responses are going to come like uh, inconsistent mm. So you get a mad result at the end. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So you you just want to to answer the questions knowing in mind that there's no right or wrong just be yourself. Because then you can become yourself and <laughs> so you have a bad relationship with yourself. And you don't know. <laughs> Let me show you how to me. That's yeah. interesting. The, yeah. We've talked about getting getting the job, right? And then you mentioned something really interesting that when covid started that's when your business boomed right yeah. so we're living in a very very different world and again because i really like that you've got the angle of a psychologist as well and i think a lot of people discovered yeah. this career that i'm in mm. it's not for me there's a different way i can work i'm not with humans anymore mm. but now you said obviously it took off way more what's the main thing that you've seen people react to after covid when it comes to career because obviously there's the isolated working etc mm. and then you've got the psychology angle yeah. so like how are people remaining or tips to remain 
are either happy in your career or if you're changing it, like how do you go through that even mentally in a post-COVID Ooh, situation? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah. It's a mm. very good question. Okay, so um, so a number of things. Because then during that time, I, I, I don't know if you had, but then there was, it was the time when so many people left. Mm. Uh, they're calling it the flight. Mm. Uh, so many people left their jobs. Yeah. Um, so many people left their jobs and started companies. In fact, I think the numbers are that most people who started the businesses during that time, those businesses, most of the, those business, businesses are thriving mm. because then I think guys took a lot of time to 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 like rethink the, their area of passion. So ended up opening businesses that they're very passionate yeah. about. And that's why most of those businesses are, you know, like are booming. Mm. So many people lost jobs. Mm. Uh, of course, suicide rates were high yeah. because then the people who lost jobs and you know you're you're the one you're, you're, you're I mean like you're the financier like in your in your family so like m- m- there are many men who got depressed during yeah. that time, yeah. um, and so th- there are a lot of changes. Then so many people like you know of course like lost jobs. So many people like were changing their you know uh, their jobs. Um, so it was a career defining moment for so many people. And I feel like um things just started moving very fast. I don't know if you if you guys felt or you know, like are still feeling it. It's like COVID happened and then all of us were just like running, running, and you can't stop. Yeah. You just need yeah. to keep going. Yeah. Because like then the go. yeah. yeah. Because then there's COVID and then now uh, after COVID, uh, what happened? Um, it was, I think, like, like, like two, you know, like two, three years COVID. Then now, like this year elections. Mm-hmm. Then now again, now they're saying a recession is coming. Yeah. So it's just yeah. through it. Yeah. <laughs> We're really going through. Yeah. No. yeah. We are just like running. Yeah. You just need to keep running because yeah. you can't stop. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because then when you stop, there's a recession. So like you know, everyone is just like going and moving. Mm. <clears throat> and I think the people who end up. Um, succeeding throughout this period are the people who are number one doing something that they're passionate about because you need passion to keep pushing Mm. you need passion to continue working even when you don't feel like you need passion to wake up on monday morning (sighs) you you, you know like if 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 it's not something that you're not passionate about you're not going to do it yeah and you're not going to make money Mm. and my motto always is money will always like you can put this you can write this on on your you know like on your bedroom wall pa- uh, money will always follow passion always it doesn't matter how mm. long it's mm. going to take but mm. you're you're going to be wealthy if you're pursuing something that you love mm. Mm. um mm. Mm-mm-mm. That is so, real. Yes, yep. <laughs> money will always follow passion. So mm-hmm. if you're broke right now, but you're following your passion, just you just wait. Mm-hmm. The, like the money is coming. Mm-hmm. It, it must. Mm-hmm. It yeah. must. Yeah. It must come. Mm-hmm. Um, but then you see what normally happens is most of us we we don't want to follow our passion. You you want to follow or you want to do that thing that you've had. Oh, if you start this business uh, because your friend is doing it and like they're making money, then no, you like you know like all Kenyans like you want to go in that direction and buy quail eggs those are times <laughs> that was a thing that was a thing <laughs> it was a thing yeah. then you hear no it's not quail eggs it's like start a podcast yeah. even if you're not passionate about it yeah. then no, like you, you want to put your money there but then if it's if it's not something if it's not in your area of your passion and what's your, the area of your passion that thing that gives you high emotion and high devotion that high you know, emotion yes say that again please high emotion uh-huh. and high devotion you see how you're very emotional yeah. right now yeah, I'm very happy <laughs> very happy uh-huh. so like if if your job does not you're not you know it doesn't give you high devotion and high emotion uh-huh. it's probably not in your area of passion uh if it's something um that you can do better than anyone else with the least amount of effort mm, i don't know it's starting a podcast sounds <laughs> like it <laughs> so that's yeah. your area of passion it's something that other people have complimented you on mm. so you can't tell me you're very good at like your passion is in cooking and like no one has ever told you yeah. your meal is you know fantastic yeah. um so s- someone else has complimented you on um and you know like it's something that you love to do you do it even if you're doing it for free it's just that no you're lucky you get yeah. paid for. i am happy <laughs> so, <laughs> So when you think about those four things, so then, please, 
again the four things. Let's repeat them. Uh-huh. So it gives you high emotion and high devotion. Uh-huh, that is one. It's the one thing that you can do better than anyone else with the least amount of effort. Uh-huh. It's a it's the one thing that you, other people have complimented you on. Of so there's a track record. Uh-huh. And then it's um it's something that you do for free. It's just that I mean, like you get paid to do it. Whether you're being paid or not, you'd still do it. Yeah. 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 Because okay. you're very good at, you know, like you're very good at. And then also very important, this one is very, very important. Yeah. When you wake up on Monday morning, you don't get depressed. Yeah. <laughs> when you think about yeah. um, you know, doing this thing. Because I don't know if, if you've experienced Monday morning, most oh, people yes. are usually yes. depressed I, yeah, yeah. When, when they imagine you're going to do whatever it is that you're going to do. But if mm. you wake up on Monday morning and you're actually excited, for me, that was how I knew it's career coaching. Because mm. it doesn't matter. Like, I, I'm very excited. On, in fact, I look forward to Mondays. Because mm. then those are the like my most productive days. Um, that's when I knew th- like this was it. But that thing for Monday usually mm. is, um, you'll know. If if you're passionate about it, Monday mornings are, you're going to be so excited to wake up on Monday. Bright morning. and early. Yeah, yeah. you'll be mm. the first one at five a.m. Because mm. then most people get depressed. I think many men leave their wives on Monday morning. Many mm. marriages break on Monday morning. Many people <laughs> quit their jobs yeah. on Monday morning. Yeah. Many Me, things happen on Monday morning. Yeah. Um, this Monday morning has been particularly <laughs> interesting. Oh, we can tell you. <laughs> we can talk about this Monday oh, morning. Goodness me. Goodness me. <laughs> I, I have, I have, I have uh, just wow. First of all, thank you for that. Um, that is so reassuring in so many ways um, for those of us who are trying to kind of make the distinction between following your passion and following what you have kind of traditionally told yourself like you're destined or born to do it. And I feel like that debate comes up a lot in life. Um, I personally am having that debate. Um, and I always tell Eli, like, it's making, it's crazy. Yeah. It's, crazy. it's crazy. That's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> like, what is the fuck, bro? That's, that's crazy. crazy. <laughs> that's, yeah. And everything's going on. Yeah, that's so. crazy. But, but let me just say this. Yeah. You see, that that the area of passion and you doing work that is important is going, is so definitive because if you do not find what that purpose is, yes. you're not going to become a good husband, you're not going to become a good father, you're not going to become a good person in the society. Mm. You're not going to become anything if you don't find your yeah. purpose. Yeah. I can hear somebody on the other end of the screen screaming like, this is amazing. Yeah. But I need to supply my, my family, family food. I know this is my passion. How do you do that jump? Because for me, in my instance, when I was in the UK uh, during COVID, I was working a job I hated. Mm. And then one day I literally said, I don't care. And mm. I booked my ticket to come back. Mm. And I, I calculated I had like two months mm. worth of money to, to survive. Yeah. Mm. But after that, if it didn't, it didn't work out, I didn't know what I was going to basically do. Mm. So how, like mine was just radical, right? So, but how does somebody go from saying, okay, I know this is my passion, but the road there, mm. I might need to concede a few months, mm. get my money up, yeah. or then I slowly go part time. Yeah. And then as I invest into this other and one. And then the obligations, yeah. you know, Eli. Yeah, there's of like children. Doing, yeah, there's children. Mm. So, how, do, yeah. how does somebody make that jump? Because I was single, like, like I was saying, I was single, I didn't have that kind of pressure. But yeah. how does somebody make the jump from that career they don't love to the passion and yeah. still have food on the table? Yeah. So I um, actually love this example because, <clears throat> and you're lucky that, mm. you know, I'm assuming at, at the time, like you're not married. So you mm. you, you you had the luxury yeah, of, exactly. of, of doing uh, that shift because what normally happens is most, most, uh, most people. So you get, for example, you, you get a job in, um, in the bank after immediately after campus, you're earning 60,000. And then what happens? You, you, you take out a loan. Like because the bank gives you like loans, mm. you take a loan. Then after the loan, what do you do? You get a wife. Mm. After the wife, you get a child. Yeah. And maybe it's not a job you love. Mm. So now you have this loan, you have a wife. You of course there's no way you can live, you know, like this yeah. job. Uh you, uh, you need a plan. So what is most important is like number one. Of course, you're not going. We are not saying that you leave your job now because then you need to put food on the table. But the very first thing that you need to find out is what is the area of passion mm-hmm. and make sure mm. it's the, you know, it's the accurate area of passion because then um, when you, uh, when you start coming up with a plan to follow this area of passion, it, it cannot be a miss. Mm, yeah. yeah. Um, because then if it's a miss, you're going to waste time and money. Yeah. 
And that's why most people, because they're not very sure about the area of passion, they say, no, it's okay. Let me just stick with what uh, mm -hmm. I hate because they're not, uh, they're not willing to have that conversation with themselves. Mm -hmm. And and you can have this conversation with yourself. You can have this conversation with a career coach. Mm -hmm. So that's why people like me are here yeah. to help you find out what that area is. That sounds like a lot of work. Because first of all, you someone's coming to you with, I feel like that degree in psychology is being put to the max yeah. now. Mm. Because someone's coming to you with, in a sense, a trauma. Yeah. In a sense that there's, yeah. there may be some trauma that comes from, I'm, I have a fear of poverty. Mm. I have a fear of being poor. I've worked my whole life mm. trying to not ever see poverty. But mm. now I'm in this place where I'm feeling like my career is essentially... Um, mm. I hate to use the word, but like useless in terms of who I am as yeah. a person. It does not contribute to who I am. Mm. Um, and then they also come into you with the question of, I have a family to raise. Mm. And I have a wife who has a particular personality mm. and probably is with me for certain reasons. Mm. And then I also have like family members who look up to me for other obligations outside of, because of course, when you, when you have a job in a country where it's just 9% of people who are employed, other people back home, you might be sending money home and you're supporting everyone. How can you, you know, does this come up as a career coach? What competencies must you use to do this effectively? Mm -hmm. That's the question I have for you. Yeah. And, and let me tell you, of course, it takes a lot of balls and guts. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know, like it takes uh -huh. a lot yeah. to, to even start having that conversation with yourself. Yeah. Like, I'm not happy. Mm -hmm. Let's let's just start with the fact that I'm not happy with this job. I hate Monday mornings. I'm I'm actually depressed. I don't love this job. And and and, and just to put some context like around it, um I there's this book, uh, Michelle Obama uh, Becoming. Yeah. She says she hated her job. Mm -hmm. She hated being a lawyer. Mm -hmm. And you know, she had this conversation with her mom who like told her that I mean, like right now, first focus on getting money, you'll focus mm -hmm. on being happy like later on um <laughs> which is of course like what many moms <laughs> like our moms will tell I, I mean you cannot leave that job as a lawyer and do what uh, mm -hmm. there's, a, there's absolutely no way like you're going to i mean and and you know like do what you like you need to stick it through we uh, then of course even our parents are going to tell us even us we did not like the jobs we had yeah. but we didn't yeah. to raise you yeah. so yeah. you know like you need to stick it out uh, so it takes a lot of you know, boldness and, and, and courage to even admit yourself that you're not happy yeah. and start coming up with a plan to, to know you're saying, I'm not happy. So now, like, what are the next steps? Can I even start by doing a LinkedIn profile? Can I start doing a CV? Can I start having conversations with people? Can I start networking? Yeah. Can I start, you know, um, on Saturdays, I'm going to do work in my area of passion to see mm -hmm. how well suitable I am. I want to start sending out my CV and, and f you know, for the job that I want, yeah. to try and see what's the appetite for my skill yeah. without like leaving this job that you know that I currently have but let me tell you the people who were in jobs that they hated but then they, they just stuck with those jobs because of a paycheck mm -hmm. and COVID came and they lost those jobs yeah, were in a worse yeah. place can you imagine being fired from a job you hate yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I was leaving anyway <laughs> I can never be <laughs> <made. laughs> <laughs> That's mad. It's yeah. like it's like I don't know what I can equate it to. That's crazy. crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. That's mad. What well, that happened? Oh, you, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's. There, <laughs> I'm just laughing because there's a there's a, a follow up question that I have is there's a different kind of leap and it's also psychological and Eli and I. Even before this shoot, that psychological leap happens every time. Mm. Between the guy who's used to working in an office that mm. doesn't have exposure to operational risks of a business. So you see, it's a textbook term, operational mm. risk. Mm. And then when you're an entrepreneur, you <laughs> look at it like <laughs> oh, I feel you when you're an entrepreneur, now you're exposed to operational <laughs> risk in real life. <laughs> in real life. <laughs> <laughs> this was not in the book. This was not in the book. <laughs> 
This is not in the brochure. This was not in the brochure for entrepreneurship. Like, I mean, like, like I'm always having that conversation for dog. Dog, this was not, this is not yeah. it. Because you see, as an entrepreneur, there's no one is coming. There's, there's no one who is coming to save you. Like, you're, you're on your own. Yeah. I think you die so many times. Oh my God. You die and come back to life. You oh. die, like, Baka, you become immune. Yeah. Because yeah. then, like, no one is coming to save you. Like, if the yeah. money that you have is, you know, gets depleted yeah. or COVID happens mm. or the recession hits, yeah. no one is coming. Yeah, but like as a career coach, now you see, that's the thing I'm telling you. Like, your your primary job, this is why for me it's like, you, because I thought about it, it must be incredibly hard because like, you're coming to talk to someone who's been taking a paycheck since they were like 19. Yeah, but then also remember, yeah. you know, I left IBM. Yeah. When I left IBM to start my business, yeah. I was broke for many years. <laughs> like, um, and I was sharing this um, in one of my platforms the other day. In 2017, I was living in a one room. Yeah. Um, because then I could not afford rent for my house yeah. and for my office. So, like, if you met me on Monday morning, I'm doing what I love and I'm happy and I'm, you know, like, I'm, we are going to talk and you think I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm living the life. But then in the evening, I'm going to go and sleep in my one room. And it worked for some time. Yeah. Yeah. Eli, what she's saying is, me and you might need to uh... downgrade. <laughs> <laughs> this lifestyle is not conducive. It's not conducive. Oh my God. That's so but, true. But you I'm see, dying. I can't. <laughs> but you see, yeah. I because I have, like, I lived through the, like, the thick, the thick of it. Yeah. When, like, those first years of entrepreneurship. Hmm. Then uh, um <laughs> <laughs> and then I then I've like I've seen firsthand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Keep talking. Because we've all been there. <laughs> <laughs> because like like one thing I um um like one thing I prayed myself. Yeah. Unless I know the advice I'm going to give you is going to make you, I don't give it. Yeah. Mm. Like I don't like I don't give so so like with all my clients, if I like Cesar Kopoteza, I yeah, would just say, yeah. I don't know, I you're going to translate. Yeah. No, no, I will not. Yeah. And but then the one thing I'm very sure about is that the man if you're following your passion, yeah, the money is coming. Mm. So whether you 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 want to downgrade for some time. It's mm. fine. Yeah, it's facts. But it's not for the faint heart. It's not for the faint hearted. No, it's not. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, it's not. Yeah. There's a thing that um my dad always tells me, and he's always talking about time. He's like, right now, your main concern should be time. Like, and how is how that is linking man? to revenue? So I remember we were picking man? up we were picking up my sister from the airport. And um, he was like, So how's your day been? Because it's the first time seeing him now. And I'm like, Yeah, I did this, 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 and this this day. He goes, Okay, so how much did you make? from those activities that you've done. And that, that's like his answer, his question every day. So how much have you made today from the activities you've done? And then linking time. Now I watched this program on Netflix where uh, they go, they talk to people that are really mm. big spenders mm. and they say, and then they, they're big spenders, but they're trapped in the job. And then they're trying to base it similar to what you do, trying to get them out to now spend the time with their passion. And it was a fantastic example of this lady that worked at a restaurant mm -hmm. and she was a waitress. Um, and basically they looked, they sat her down, they looked at her expenses in a month, they looked at her paycheck and then they, they were like, okay, if you want to be able to spend time with your passion, the, the disconnect is that you have to work these hours to sustain these expenses. So the, the equation for them was let's reduce the expenses so you can reduce the time that you're spending at your job, take less hours and then take a Saturday rather than a shift, you go and work on what you want to do. So she was an artist. So when she was in, when she was being a waitress, she had to work Saturdays because she used to order takeout every day. So the one change they made is they were like, you're going to cook every week and prep your meals. That cuts down your expense, which means you can get rid of this shift on a Saturday. So that was the first practical thing they did. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then she was like, cool. Then she on the Saturday, she started dog walking in the morning because it was less time. And then in the afternoon, no, she was dog walking, but then she would draw the people's dogs sell them the picture of the dog and then be like, oh, can I actually uh, walk your dogs later? Mm -hmm. Right. So then she was doing her passion, which is drawing mm -hmm. on a Saturday, not in the, not there. Right. So then from doing this, she started connecting with more people. Mm -hmm. Then she got an opportunity to now do a mural, mm -hmm. like on the side of the road, because she was an artist. Right. Mm -hmm. Then it kept building. Then she started selling um, 
artwork digitally mm. online because mm. she had that Saturday. But I think sometimes what happens, the downsizing is that you're trapped not because you don't have time, but it's because your expenses dictate how much time you have to spend yeah. at work. So that's why whenever my dad says how much time have you spent on what you love, like today and how much have you made, I always think about that girl as well. Like, is my time being split? Yeah. Am I like working What's to work? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I think time is a massive yeah. factor. For, for me, expense. I did that completely by accident. Yeah. Entirely. Yeah. Entirely by accident for yeah. for the podcast because mm. I, uh, uh, I previously worked at 9 to 5 mm. that sometimes turned into a 9 to 9. Um, what I used to do is I had my Saturday morning hours mm. were absolutely untouchable. Yeah. It was it was like church. You know, it's yeah. like yeah. this is sacred. I don't mm. care if there's a family trip. If mm. there's, I don't care what it is. I really don't. Yeah. But when Beryl says we are shooting at this time, I'll come yeah. late, and yeah. Beryl will be like, <laughs> I hate this guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I will come, and we will do the shoots, and. Mm. Over time, I think, uh, because personally, I, I don't know if I've made the shift. I feel like I have technically. Yeah, yeah I have. Okay. I have. Yeah. But like, <laughs> um, once I started doing that and then I started doing it more consistently, then because Eli left for, that's crazy <laughs> now that I think about it. Uh -huh. When Eli left for his thing mm -hmm. over, over COVID, mm -hmm. we had to innovate around that. So I had to spend more time mm -hmm. with the audience members. How did we do it? Instagram lives. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So every Thursday again became like church. Yeah. Thursday, it doesn't matter if there's, a, if there's anything mm -hmm. important. Mm -hmm. I'll make sure that I organize my time such that I have that 9 p.m. Even if it means working till like Wednesday till like 11 sometimes mm -hmm. or coming. There's even one live I did. I came straight with my tie sagged mm -hmm. and I was like, guys, I've had a long day. Mm -hmm. I'm in the middle of a project. Mm -hmm. Tell us how your day has been. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and like that really, like really, mm. like drove. Yeah. Mm. This this also links to what you're saying about the passion. Yeah. You have to be able to Do have that. the passion so that you can set aside that time, right? Yeah. Exactly. A parallel to this, while you're doing your work thing, when I was in the UK working the job I hated. Yeah. I work on Saturdays, right? Mm. And I had to be in the office by seven. But in in, in Kenya, it's a two hour difference. Yeah. So the reason I could I used to wake up at I think four forty five mm. so that we could shoot, shoot. our virtual yeah. set up cameras yeah. in my bedroom. Yeah. Have them showered, just wash my face, right? <laughs> shoot an episode. If you go back to those yeah. ones, I probably woke up fifteen minutes before yeah. that. Shoot the episode and then i remember whenever there was technical difficulties i'd be so frustrated because yeah. i could see my clock i know when i have to drive to my shift but mm -hmm. like if i didn't care about man talk mm -hmm. i would we never have got done up it. You yeah. never right? done it. And, then, and on thursdays similar to you i would literally rush back and sometimes i'd be on the live in the car yeah so that when i get there i can now you know yeah. sort of adjust so mm -hmm. it's it links yeah. the time and the passion i've seen it another thing yeah. how many hours have we spent on the phone Oh my gosh! Safari How many hours? Safari club club. Because <laughs> young, <See that? laughs> like that yeah. thing where you're like you're picking, you're like okay. Because yeah. for me, I could kind of tell he's stressed. Mm. Yeah, 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 I could tell mm. Eli is stressing. That yeah. time I was like Eli is stressed. Yeah. So I was like, bro. Was, you had a, 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 a new calendar. I saw you. Yeah, yeah. thing, check up on Eli. I had a calendar for like yeah. nah, check up on Eli yeah. because like I could tell yo this guy mm. there's something going on in London. He's not yeah. telling me, yeah. but there's something it going on in hell. London. Yeah. Eight p.m. was yeah. check up on Eli. So like I'd finish work. Um, I'd be in traffic because um, at that time you'd be in traffic probably between. 8 p.m. and 9, so you're in traffic. I, I live. I, I used to live along Kambu Road. So I'm on. I'm in traffic. Then I'm like, call Eli. So I'm like, bruh, how have you been? What's mm. up? He's like, nah, I'm just in the middle of my shift. You know, like, yeah, like, yeah. and he's in the middle of his shift. And yeah, yeah, yeah. What he's doing? Oh yeah, we're doing this. We're doing this. We're doing that. Mm. And when I um and when I went to school for post grad, same thing happened. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was school. I'm like, Whoa. yeah, same thing. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah we we'll push it. Yeah, uh, yeah. Man, I'm, I'm trying to figure out this spreadsheet thing. Yeah. What the hell is an LBO? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. So like. Yeah, you're right. Passion, man. Passion, dog. Yeah. yeah. And I like what you've said about the uh, this, this this girl in the mm. mirror. Mm. Uh, because then sometimes the, the road from what you hate, what you love is identify what you love and start doing even if it's just for short periods of time. Yeah, yeah. Because then it opens you. I, I, I can't even explain it. It just does something to you mm. when you start doing that thing that you love. Yeah, yeah. And because... You know, we are saying it's the thing that you can do better than anyone else with the least amount of effort. Yeah. It means then, you see, like what you can do with the thing that you love, even if it's 30 minutes, to someone else, they'd be like, you, you did that in 30 minutes yeah. only. Yeah. You know, yeah. because then you, you, you love it and you are quote unquote like gifted it's mm. it's uh so for me i normally believe like when we, when we were created god 
deposited something in all of us. Mm-hmm. So the, the, all of us have giftings and, and giftings and skills and strengths for, you know, for you to do whatever it is that you are created to do. Mm-hmm. Until you find out what that is, you'll always be unhappy. Go around in circles. Yeah. yeah. But mm-hmm. then when you when you identify what that is, you're going to know. Mm-hmm. You'll mm-hmm. know. Yeah. 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 I really hope that's like given somebody some solace. Maybe that's trying to figure out that that career thing. Yeah. Those four the five points, sorry, we're just yeah. Yeah, yeah. like wow. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Wow. I don't even know. Like yeah, that we, went that took a turn. Yeah, yeah. Um in the interest of time. Sorry, yes. Wow, we could talk I, about oh this my all God, week. I have so many questions, but yeah. yeah, hopefully you can maybe come back for another one. But um I value your time, so thank you for sharing with us. And just the insights, like just giving these guys for free and what you're doing online. I was going on your highlights and the amount of like positive feedback. I got an interview because I followed your steps. Mm-hmm. Um, you're doing incredible work. Yeah. So if you guys don't know about Joanne's work, we'll put her link there. If you're going through like career switches, etc., this is, uh, is the person to speak to. Joanne, I have an ask. I don't know if you'll, if you'll share that, if you'll help us. Mm-hmm. It's an ask that is surprising mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. Do you mind if we make like a if you have like a template or a CV or cover letter, like a template one, so like undergrads can just go click it and like see what a template looks like. Yeah, so I'm actually working on that. Okay. Um. So like, so there the, are going to be different templates, Ooh. templates for an ATS CV and yeah. a modern CV, a Excellent. cover letter. If you have a website, uh, a place you can access that. Y- yes, I'm, I'm actually, it's it's in the works. Excellent. Amazing. When it's ready. Yeah, when it's ready. When you're ready. Follow her page. So when she announces it. Yeah. And and we will be also like push for them to yeah. check out your page. Yeah. 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 And because I, I surmise that it will be ready by the time yeah. you're watching this at home. 100%. 100%. This yeah. might have been part of the plan. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. So yeah, so, yeah, thank you so much, Joanne. Guys, wait, I really hope you Wait, 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 wait. Like one last question, Eli. One last question? Okay. Joanne. Oh, God. What is that one last piece of content? That oh, yeah. That video. Yeah. Yes. That movie, yeah. that thing that you watch that you would like to share with everyone that you think can add value to their life. That's something crucial to us at Man Talk. We want to know what's that one piece of content, whether it's a book, a film, a movie that you consume or you have consumed that you feel like added total value to who you are as a person. <sighs> To be very honest, it's the Bible. I knew you'd say that. Oh, I yeah. knew you'd amazing, say that. Amazing, it was a trap. Yeah. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. For is, me it's it, the Bible. is there like a Bible verse you can you can leave us with? Hi, yay. Um, actually, yes. Um, hmm. I, I forget like the verse, the the chapter because right now my, my mind is all over. But it says, uh, "Do you see a man skilled in his work? He's going to stand before kings. He's not going to stand in front of obscure men." Amen. Do you see a man, uh, you know, skilled at what he does, or do you see a man gifted at what he does? And so for me, it's such an important verse because it just, you know, um, rubber stamps my my belief in all of us need to find out what our strengths, our skills, our passions, our areas of giftings, because then once you do that, then everything else, you know, like who you marry, what you do like everything else just comes into uh, perspective. So it's very important that you identify what your giftings are, what your strengths and skills are. And then you see, like the Bible says, you're going to stand before kings. You're not going to stand before obscure men mm-hmm. once you identify your area of Let me passion tell you. Yeah. and yeah. of gifting. Yeah. There's a there's a Latin thing in my head that just went like, wow. <laughs> it goes, viva trex ni homine. Okay. What is that? It means that kings dwell within us. May, queen, may kings dwell within us. Mm. So like through our work, like through what we do and mm. how we live our lives, mm. yeah. kings beautiful. dwell within us. That's beautiful. Yeah. That is a beautiful way to end the episode. episode. Thank you so much, Joanne. Thank you. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, standard, and yeah. uh, follow Joanne's page for more inspo. Bye. Bye. Mm-hmm.